Hello, hello. Uh, it's so good to be back. Uh, welcome to the Autism 360 podcast, The 360 Method, a weekly podcast where we chat about everything Autism 360. Each week, we will be catching you up with what's going on in the program, chatting with team members, special guests, and talking all things mindset, as well as exploring relevant ideas that autism parents think about. I'm your host. My name is Ella Bailey, and I'm an Autism 360 veteran coach and explorer of all things parenting support. Uh, before I became an Autism 360 team member, which is nearly three years now, uh, I work in psychological research and in behavioral psychology. So welcome to you, our lovely listeners. We care about you. We care about your experiences and your thoughts. Um, and we make this podcast for you. So if you have anything you'd like me to discuss, any guests you'd like me to have on, or any questions you would like answered, please do drop us a line at hello at autism360.com. That is the reason that we do these. It's to, to answer your questions um, and to give you the information that you're seeking. So please do get in touch. Before I get started on today's Parenting Hack podcast, um, I would like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation on whose land I live and work and from where this podcast is being broadcast. And also, I would just like to uh, make a disclaimer that this podcast does not substitute for medical advice. Um, and if you do have concerns about yourself or about a loved one, please do reach out to a healthcare professional. So today... I'm going to be chatting about parenting hacks. Now, I know that this is a big um, clickbait uh, topic on the internet, but I've been doing this a while now. Um, I've been working not only with, um, you know, my, my own families face to face, but I've also worked with dozens, maybe hundreds of families in my professional work. And, you know, I've picked up a few things along the way. And I think that um, we should all get access to things that make our lives a bit easier. So these are my kind of um, secret parenting hacks that um, my parents can get access to when they have coaching with me uh, here in the program. But I'm going to let you in on a few of them, not all of them, but some of them. And I think that, um you know, some of them you might have heard before, but some of them might be a little bit unusual. So um, there are lots of different ways that I think about making parenting life easier. You know, my whole mission in life is to find ways to help parents be the kind of parents that they want to be. And obviously my, my background is psychology. So I come at this from a psychological perspective bent a psychological perspective. And all of these hacks, I believe that they have a, a through line that runs through them. And all of them are to do with, in some way, shape or form, enabling us to preserve our cognitive and emotional capacity for what is truly important. I think my biggest parenting life hack, and I don't know if you could really call this a life hack, but I think my biggest parenting life hack is to recognize the importance of the cognitive load of parenting and how you can maximize it purposefully and efficiently. Parenting is as physically exhausting as it is mentally exhausting, especially as children get older. And the more quickly that we can recognize and make more efficient the way that we are um taking up our mental bandwidth, the better that we are able to be present, the better we are able to be purposeful about the way that we are using that cognitive bandwidth. And I want to really assure you that cognitive bandwidth, emotional energy, um, it's often referred to as spoons, um, which we've chatted about on this podcast before, is truly a finite capacity between rest periods. So our uh, sleep and wakefulness cycle between rest periods, we physically only have a certain amount of resources with which to fuel our brain, after which point our brain needs to go into a rest cycle, a sleep cycle to um, then process the waste products that get created when we're concentrating, when we're using our brain, and also refuel with glycogen from the body that comes in through our foods, right? So it's it's as physical and finite an energy source as the 
micronutrients that are required for you to power yourself through a workout. Everybody knows that, you know, you, um, if you eat carbs and then you go do a cardiovascular uh, type workout, those carbs are going to be used up and then they will be finished. You cannot reuse, you cannot re-engage with that activity until you have another fuel session um, with which to uh, give that um, those resources. And the exact same is, is the case with the brain, but I don't think it's as widely known as it needs to be. So recognize, first of all, that your brain capacity is as important to your parenting as your physical capacity, and it is as finite and limited, and that you need to be as strategic about that as you do with your physical capacity. So that's my, first, I'll get off my soapbox now, but that's the first thing that I want to start with. This, my first life parenting hack is carabiners. It takes up mental bandwidth and space in your head when you have to worry about dropping everything, about things getting lost, about kids dropping their drink bottle, about losing everybody's hats. Obviously, this is um, applicable in different ways as kids get older. But a carabiner and having it attached to something means that, yes, obviously you don't have the painfulness of losing everybody's hats or everybody's water bottles and or, uh, you know, your kids dropping things out of the, the pram or whatever. But what it actually does is it takes the mental load of you needing to be vigilant about all those items not, not getting lost away from you because you have a backup system which is the carabiner and you know you could replace carabiner here with um you know like a, a dummy clip that but that you use for say I don't know a, a snack bag or a you know a piece of cord that you use to attach the um the gloves to your child's coat or whatever it might be Take away the burden of yourself of needing to remember everything by attaching it physically and you'll be surprised how much of a difference it makes to your stress levels when you have to leave the house. Um, this is something I used to do all the time when I was um, doing uh, disability support with young kids, also accessing the community, um, doing, you know, therapeutic, that kind of thing. When I didn't have to worry about the fact that, you know, the kid might lose their hat because it was, um, you know, there was a cord tying it on, um, that allowed me to let go of that, that thing that I had to be vigilant about and freed up brain space for something else, which as is going to be the through line of this whole podcast is um, a really important thing. All right, next, next hack. Um, there are so many free resources on the internet. It can be really overwhelming and I'm totally aware, but one of them that I have found really can make a difference for extending the interest time that your child has in a particular activity. So this might be, um, you know, you have your child at home for a day on the weekend and you've set up a bunch of stations for them to be um, moving through independently. You know, you might be teaching transition skills maybe. And you've got, say, a puzzle, but you've also got some coloring in or maybe some worksheets, fine motor tasks or gross motor tasks. Um, you can extend the interest time in those kinds of tasks, fine motor, motor or gross motor tasks, by um, playing an audiobook at the same time. So, for example, a child may be able to concentrate on a puzzle on its own for five minutes. However, if you play a puzzle, if you play an audiobook in the background at the same time as doing a puzzle, they may be able to sit and be entertained by that for 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So my life hack is play an audiobook. There are free audiobooks on YouTube. There are kids appropriate ones. Um, and you can also borrow them from your library. Libraries will um, digitally lend you audiobooks, kid kid audiobooks. Um, and you can use those in so many different scenarios. A really good one is um, a child who is struggling to soothe themselves to sleep or a child who is unable to stop the uh, maybe the rumination, anxiety-based rumination um, as they're settling themselves to sleep. A familiar audiobook that they've listened to before um, and it's obviously age-appropriate and not scary is going to be the perfect thing and you can put them on a timer 
So they don't go for the whole night necessarily. Um, you can just, uh, you know, set them for a timer. And then when the timer goes off, it, it stops the audiobook. And that's going to be the perfect way after you've settled your child to sleep. They can just lie, listen to the audiobook. They already know what's happening in the audiobook. So they're not going to stay awake and listen. And that's going to be a nice way to soothe them to sleep. We can't recommend that more highly. Um, it's worked wonders for some of the families um, in my program. And I know that there's, lot, as I say, there's lots of free ones on YouTube and your library will be able to rent them to you um, digitally. In the same vein, there are wonderful kids podcasts. So um, podcasts, as we know, they're exploding. I mean, they're everywhere at the moment. Um, uh, and you're listening to one right now, in fact. Um, so we know you know what podcasts are. Um, there are awesome kids podcasts that are really fun for the car. Now, obviously, um, everybody's car is different in the way that it's set up, but um, most people can um, figure out a way to get an audio, uh, sorry, a podcast playing in the car audio system. And kids' podcasts are designed to obviously, they're, uh, they're typically shorter. They might be, you know, uh, five to 10 minute chunks. And they are um, designed, uh, obviously, with kids in mind and therefore them engaging in different ways. But what that's really good for is okay, say um, there's traffic that you didn't realize and your kiddo um, knows that's not normal um, and that causes some anxiety. What you can do, and again, it's all about um, putting their attention where you need it to be to help them to get through the situation. You popping on, you know, maybe the next episode of their favorite podcast um, that's designed for them is going to be the perfect way to help distract them enough to cope with a traffic situation or an unexpected wait. So my suggestion is, you know, have a look through the most highly rated kids podcasts, give them a go. They'll have an age rating. Um, and that can be a really great way to um, help your kid uh, pass time in the car. I think that's a really good one. Um, another video hack. Oh, this one has saved me millions of times. When a kiddo is having a big struggle, they're having a big meltdown, having heaps of really big feelings. There is no point in trying to rationalize them out of that. All, all that you can provide is a safe space um, so that they're not going to hurt themselves or others and comfort because that's what they need in that moment. And something that is comforting and regulating is rhythm. So we see this a lot when um, kiddos are young, you know, so we might um, stand and sway and rhythmically pat them on the back. And that's something that's really soothing for kids. And that doesn't cease to be the case when they grow older. So rhythm is something that kids can find really soothing when they're not able to receive verbal reassurance from you. There is an excellent um, spoken word book that is really rhythmic and um, percussive in the way that it's performed on YouTube, um, which is a, a version of we're going on a bear hunt. I love we're going on a bear hunt. Obviously, this is for early learners, but I love we're going on a bear hunt because, again, it has a really strong cadence and a strong rhythm to the way that the word the words are, are created, the stanzas. And um, this particular one, uh, it has, I believe, the the it's by Walker Books. It's on the Walker Book, the book publishers um, YouTube page, and it's got the illustrator of "We're Going on a Bear Hunt," um, Jeremy Rosen, I believe his name is. Um, he's reading the book, but as as I say, it's in this really rhythmic way. And multiple times, I have put you know a kiddo might be mid meltdown, and I put that video on really nice and loud. I, um, I turn off the screen of my phone, so there's nothing for them to see, only hear. And the rhythm of the way that this book um, is spoken in this particular version is so soothing that it allows them to come out of this big emotion that they're feeling and be soothed by the rhythm. And this has worked for me many times. I can't can't recommend it more highly. It's one of my best parenting hacks. If your if your kiddo is struggling with feelings that you can't help them manage, put on something really rhythmic. This specific um, YouTube video that I've mentioned is a good one, um, but I'm sure there are lots of different options as well. All right, let's move on to um, 
there is something that is really um, helpful for the way that children learn to use the same phrase for things. So, for example, um, we would, uh, when I was working with a family, we would come home and they all knew first tidy your zone, first tidy your zone. And we had, you know, we had established what that meant. We had established what behaviors that entailed and they all knew first tidy your zone. And because we use the same language every week, we use the same language between contexts, between their parents, between myself, between themselves. They all knew what the expectation was. And when you decide on a phrase to explain something, it creates a consistency, again, that reduces the cognitive load of the expectation. And even more so when you can get your child to repeat it back to you. So after a few times of me saying, first, tidy your zone, I would ask the kids on the way home, okay, what do we do first? And they would say back to me, first, tidy your zone. And so they knew the first thing that we did, we got home, we tidied up our little areas while I got afternoon tea ready. And that was just a really clear phrase that was meaningful to them. They knew what the expectation was by using that same words consistently. So one of my one of my parenting hacks is decide on your phrases and generalize them across your care team so that you're all using the same words to express the same expectations. And you'll see that kids understand more quickly, they're less confused, and it makes the whole process more efficient. Um, next, there is a really good uh, teaching method that I want you to think of as a parenting hack. It's my mass parenting hack, and that is model assist solo. This is how you teach any new skill. First, you model it every time. First, you model it, M. Then you assist them to do it. Then they try solo. So any new skill, use the mass trick, M-A-S, parenting hack. <laughs> um, my next one, I have tried this with many families on the program, especially with slightly older kids and teens. This one works really well in terms of, okay, we are having some tensions in the family. We're needing to work on building relationships, that kind of thing. Humor. Oh my gosh. Bringing humor into your parenting is amazing for helping to cut through maybe some built up tension, some stuff going on in the house um, that you want to be able to clear away so that you can maintain rapport with your child, build the relationship, that sort of thing. There is a family-friendly version of a card game called Cards Against Humanity. Now, this version, um, as I say, it's family-friendly, but it does have sort of silly, um, you know, potty-based humor. Um, it's, it's the idea being that one person puts out a prompt card with a question on it um, that could be anything, and then the people, uh, the rest of the people playing put in responses to that card. And there's no sort of obvious winner or loser. The idea is that you just create silly little scenarios and you all have a good time and laugh while you're doing it. There is a free version of this game on the Cards Against Humanity website. You can actually print it off, uh, download it and print it off and cut it up and use it if you want. It's also obviously available in stores. But um, I can't, th this one has been really good for Say you're having, you have two teens and they're not getting on. Bring some humor into the situation. Play a game of Cards Against Humanity uh, family version with them and you'll be surprised at the results. I really think that um, it's a really fun way to kind of reduce the stakes of interaction a little bit um, and just bring a little bit of levity to a situation which could otherwise be a bit fraught. Um, another one. And uh, some of my clients who are listening to this will know that I'm a big proponent of the slow cooker. I am such a slow cooker fan. I slow cook at all times. Um, and what I like about the slow cooker is that you can put in the cognitive input once and get uh, returns the compound, right? So at the beginning of the week, you create a bunch of freezer bags of um, items or you don't, you just shop from slow cooker recipes. And then every day, the cognitive load of needing to um, 
of needing to think about your meal, prepare your meal ahead of time, worry about the meal when you're in that real crunch time at the end of the day. Families don't need that. Families don't need the stress of having to worry about their meal right at that time of the day when A, their kids are dysregulated from school, B, you might have some therapies on after school or activities. Do not set yourself up to fail by leaving thinking about dinner until that time. Make a slow cooker do it for you. You can pop something in at the beginning of the day, come back and your dinner's been made for you. It's like a little maid in the kitchen. You come back and you've got a beautiful casserole. The other day I made some uh, really delicious cinnamon scrolls in my slow cooker. So all things can be done, get creative. Um, And I think especially for busy working parents, a slow cooker can be a lifesaver because it takes the exact amount of time, the exact same amount of time to cook one night's meal as it does to cook three night's meals. So Three of your nights of the week are sorted with one um, slow cooker meal. Another life hack. Have you ever heard of the backseat karma? This is a fun um, little object who um, I use when kiddos are having trouble managing the sensory inputs of the car. So the car can be really tricky for uh, visual input specifically, but also obviously auditory and the sensory buzzing and that kind of thing. The backseat karma is just a big foam uh, barrier that you can place in the middle of the backseat of the car. It buckles into the middle of the car. And you can use that as a physical barrier to block out the visual sensory input that's stressing your kid out. It can also be really helpful for if your kids are hitting each other, (laughs) if your kids aren't hoping and they need um, to create a physical space just for themselves so that they can keep their hands to themselves so that they can not be lashing out at anybody. We can keep our kids safe, even though they're in obviously the confined space of the car by popping in a backseat karma and um, using that as a way to partition the space. I've had some families really improve the safety of their driving by being able to put that barrier in there um, because it's, it just does exactly what it says on the box. It it creates individual little spaces, um, but obviously doesn't block the view or, or anything like that. Life hack. (laughs) Um, Another really good life hack. And I know that these are all just small things, but I think when it comes to parenting, every little helps, you know, um, is zip up bed sheets. So obviously lots of our kiddos do have sensory stuff going on. They may be bad sleepers, you know, autism and insomnia can go hand in hand. And the last thing that we need is a kiddo waking up after you've spent two hours settling them because they're cold due to sheets being kicked off. You can buy bed sheet sets that you zip up over the mattress and then it's zip you can zip it on three sides the doona can be zipped on three sides to keep um to keep it all nice and cozy during the night when your kid is in there and then the next day even if they fling off the sheets it doesn't go anywhere you can just simply zip it back up it's also really easy to teach a kid to zip a doona back up rather than having to worry about you know this is how you get the doona back on the bed this is how you put a sheet on that kind of thing. Zip up bed sheets. I believe there's a brand called Betty's. Um, I don't, I have never used them, but um, I believe that there is one called that um, who uh, make these kinds of bed sheets. You can get them in all different colors, shapes, sizes. (laughs) Um, But you know what? Why not take that worry off your plate um, and systematize that kind of thing? Something else that I wanted to mention was a lot of the time parents come to realize that actually the biggest thing that they can control about when their child has a meltdown is their own response. And something that we're not taking into consideration when we think about our own responses to those sorts of things are our sensory processing struggles. I share with families all the time that I have a real struggle when it comes to the auditory input of going into the shopping of going into a shopping center I find the noise really stressful um, and I just don't I can't enjoy it unless I have noise cancelling headphones on so I have a big pair of headphones that I pop on and I'll just t- turn the noise cancelling on I don't necessarily put on a podcast I'd never put on music I find that really stressful 
but I just turn the noise cancelling on and it brings the input down. I feel far more regulated. I feel far more uh, like I can concentrate on what I want to do. So have a think about your own sensory struggles. There is a brand, I mean, there are many brands, but this particular brand I've had some good results for parents with of earbuds that reduce environmental noise by a specific amount of decibels. And so that allows you to bring down the noise, but not have obviously the safety concerns of not being able to hear anything at all. So these are called loop earbuds um, and they you can actually buy earbuds by the specific number of decibels you want to bring the noise down by. And so that, for example, could allow a parent of a young person who is struggling and maybe making lots of loud screaming noises to bring down that sound to a level where they're then able to stay and support that child with those big emotions uh, without being so dysregulated by the noise that they themselves can't cope. I've had some really good success with that. And if you give it a try, I would love to uh, hear what you, um, what situations you use them for. I mean, you'll see me every time I'm in Aldi popping on those headphones because I can't cope with the noise. So uh, let me know. Um, that's going to be it for my parenting uh, life hacks. If you have any good ones, I would love for you to send them in or maybe pop them on our Facebook group. We've got a really lovely um, Facebook group uh, that um, of parents and carers who share advice and wisdom. And I love the things that I get to learn from them on there. So we will be back next week with another podcast on something relevant to autism parenting. Thank you so much for being here this week. And I will see you then. Until next week, Think 360.